Okay, people, we're diving back into the Blue in the Face playthrough for Ori and the Will of the Wisps. For this game session, I had to go back and re-record the entire thing because my recording had a lot of audio glitches and that was very unfortunate, but that hasn't taken away from my enjoyment of the game, so we're gonna get right into it. Let's get started. All right, we're back. We are going to do a lot of exploration today, and before we get started with it, I'm going to switch my sentry over to regenerate because we won't be trying to deal maximum DPS for right now since we're just wandering around. But I am going to continue messing around with the mallet because this thing is a terrible amount of fun. Now, it is a little bit unfortunate that I have to go back and do a re-record because a little bit of the wonderment gets lost when you go through something a second time, especially in a game like Ori, where discovering something for the first time is a huge part of the joy of the experience. But the, the good thing about it is the game is still very fun. So, even though I'm, I'm retreading territory, I get to fight the bad guys again. I get to smash things with my big old hammer, and that's a good time. So, what we're doing here is exploring some of the gray areas on the map. Because I want to see what I can get, if there's anything that will help me to navigate into the areas that I cannot yet navigate into. And, and maybe we'll just discover something. So, we're just going to retread some of the the different areas and see if there's anything that I missed. Now it's very clear to me that the purple poisonous waters are preventing a large amount of my exploration. So I'll have to keep that in mind. That's probably gonna be the thing that stops us from navigating through a lot of these areas, but it doesn't hurt to check because we have not been in this direction since acquiring the ability to bash. And I don't mean bash with the hammer, I mean this bash. This gives us a lot of extra mobility. And it lets us reach different places. Unfortunately, we can't reach that place because that currency would be awesome. But th this is a part of the game that I do enjoy a lot. And, and the part is the, where you get to go in and have that 100% completionist mentality. Because I'm doing this exploration in part because I sort of don't know where to go, but also because there is fun to be had in, in revisiting old places. It's like if you play an RPG and you get to the max level, then you go back to level one areas and you destroy everything. It's got that sort of feeling. And now we have an opportunity to use Bash. So we have to use it to reach even higher heights. The finesse required to make this work is very high. <laughs> and even though I have done this bit before, I'm actually kind of bad at it. I'm gonna die a lot here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that wasn't super graceful, but we made it and we are going to get some extra currency for that. I had to take some damage in order to get this, but a giant spirit-like container is worth a few points of damage. So let's continue on and see what else we can find in this area. Let's go this way. Okay, there's the poison water. Perfect. So now we have to make our way back down. Let's try not to get shot. That, that would... So, please! So we got some money for that, no big deal. Now we're gonna continue along in this direction. Psych, we're not going that way because the water's poison. But what else can we do? I may be able to travel this way and find something over there. And also there has been an energy cell sitting in this spot for the longest freaking time and I feel like I should know how to get it by now or have the ability to get it. So we're going to head to that energy cell and see if we can't figure out a way to pick it up. All right. Oh, I saw it. I saw a small glimpse of a lever. 
I have to bring this guy up and use him to get to this area. Brilliant. Ha, ah, that's amazing. Uh, you know, I, I remember what I did the first time. I've been trying to smash that wall almost every time I walk past it, and it doesn't work. And something that I realized when I did this the first time is that this game requires a bit more finesse than I'm giving it credit for. I'm operating under the assumption a lot of times that if there's a wall that I can't get through, it's because I don't have the strong enough weapon to break through it, but that has proven to be not the case more times than not. So what I'm going to have to start doing is operating with the mindset that if there is something I can't reach, there's probably a lever nearby that I can pull or an, an object that I can interact with in order to get to it. That, and that, that's going to change the way I interact with the game tremendously. Oh, <laughs> we meet again, Spider and Slug, but this time I am more prepared to deal with the both of you. I have no fear when it comes to these simple enemies anymore. My mallet is too strong. We now have the ability to bash our way through <laughs> these areas and hopefully I don't take a bajillion damage along the way. Hello, new enemy type. Oh, this is... This is intimidating. Every time I think I'm getting better at the game, I end up taking a million damage shortly afterwards. Okay, let's time our jump correctly so that we can use Bash to get across this way. And I see, hidden in the rocks, not a life cell fragment. I thought this was a life cell fragment, but it was just HP. That's okay. Okay, that totally wasn't worth it. Because I took all the damage immediately back. <laughs> Moving right along. Here's the part that gave me a lot of trouble and sparked some very beautiful moments for me. Ah, welcome, you've come at the right time. I've just deciphered these stones. To the casual observer, they might look like a pile of rocks, but to me, they're a key. See how some are long and some are short? They're notes to a song. I'm sure the song opens this gate to the midnight burrows. I'm just not sure how. Now this part, when I played it the first time, had me stuck for a very long time because I read the dialogue that Talk was saying and it was interesting, but I wrote it off as just Talk being Talk because he's like, he's, he's kind of a goofball and he's, he's slightly cryptic, but everything that he was saying was all the information that I needed to advance to the next area and I had to put the pieces together. And this was to me, a beautiful way to create a puzzle experience that the player has enough information to solve without looking up a guide. So, what we have to do is use the pattern of the stones to ring the bells. Ring the bells? There are no bells. Aha, that's where you're wrong. These flowers play musical notes whenever I bounce on them. And I could be wrong, but the musical notes played by the flowers are the same as the notes in the song that's playing in the background. I'm not sure how perfectly they match up, but they do sound similar. So what we have to do is play long, short, medium, medium, long, short, long, and then the door is going to open. Okay. Just like that, we can advance into a new area. The first time I did that, just my brain exploded when I put all the pieces together. Because it, it is, playing a game doesn't just have to be 
a, a brain dead, relaxing experience. There is something about putting your mind to work in order to figure something out that is satisfying. And I totally get wanting to play certain games to relax and chill, but there are there, there's tremendous value for me in some gaming experiences having more, more depth to them and, and requiring more of me than just pressing forward and, and holding W on, on the keyboard. And in, in all honesty, the, the amount of processing power that it takes to go through that simple puzzle is not that extreme, if we're honest. I'm sure a very small child could have figured that out, and I'm sure if anybody watching right now also plays Ori and the Will of the Wisps, you probably figured it out way faster than I figured it out the first time. It took me about 20 minutes to get it. I was like, how the hell, what you talking about? It's hot, the stones are the key. And I was like, oh, that's what he means. So for this next area, we've got a new mechanic. These areas act as portals to new areas. So what we have to do is find a way to control our momentum to catapult ourselves to new heights. I'm not going to kill these guys a second time. But if we go into areas like that, we can pick up keystones because our momentum is high enough. Whoops. I messed up the jump a little bit. There. Well, a lot of bit there. I have to be careful about these spikes. and They're everywhere. But I don't quite have enough moment. There we go. I'm going to drink a potion. So now when I go in, I'm going to come back out with plenty of height. And then we'll go into this one because I need maximum. Oh, I messed it up again. I need maximum jump height in order to get to the next area. And that is exactly it. Not today, friend. Sent his own attack back at him. Now I'm going to use the projectile to advance up to the bashing lantern. And we've got a spider. Spiders are not super problematic. I'm very bad at aiming these. I just need to take my time more. I'm trying to be cool and, and send the projectile back almost immediately after I pick it up. But it's probably better for me to take the time to aim it steadily. But here is the door that we need to use our keystones for. I have one out of four. Now let's continue moving on in this puzzle heavy section. I will say this about going through this puzzle section is that it reminds me a, a bit of doing raids in Destiny with my, my group of buddies that I raid with because I'm treading through territory that I have been through before so I know what to do, sort of. <laughs> Maybe I don't know what to do that well. But th th the point is, th the amount of fun that, that I have is not completely conting contingent upon knowing exactly where to go and what to do. Because it's like, the thing is, once you know where you're supposed to be going for something, that leaves you open to optimizations. That's where you start trying to get better at whatever thing that you're doing. That's what I was looking for. My brain was farting very, very heavily there, and I couldn't figure out which portal I needed to go into. I'm gonna swat these guys off of the walls because they're gonna cause me some grief if I don't. Before I go back through that portal, I wanna check out what's over this way, and it is a lever. And there's also a keystone up there. So let me go back in. There we go. Got it. I had to jump as soon as I came out of the portal and then use my dash in order to get to it without taking damage. And pulling the lever is going to pull up the trees and change the location at which the different portals spit me out. So that's not going to send me anywhere significant. What I need to do here is jump, dash, bash. Jump, dash, bash. Jump, dash. We've made it to safety. And another lever. 
this one was was pretty cool. When I open this door, it doesn't actually stay open. I have to race against the clock before the door closes all the way so that I can slide under it and then reach back and grab my hat and then kill the slug that's waiting for me on the other side with his guns drawn on the doorway. That is very ridiculous. So I'm going to pull this and I'm going to get the door open at its maximum and now we're going to go through and then bash our way to the door. Got it. First time, you got me. The first time I came in here, that thing destroyed me. But this time, I was ready for it. I'm using my ranged attacks a lot more than I, I have been. And I wanted to use sentry there, but I, I forgot I took it off. So I'll just pew pew him down a couple of times. Because really, I don't know that I can reach that enemy with my mallet. And that's okay. So now, it would appear we have another section where momentum is going to be very integral to my success. So let's get as much leverage as we can and grab our keystone. And now, is that breakable? That is breakable. Hey. Oh, this, this is bringing me back to an older area of the map, isn't it? This is, this is something I actually didn't discover the first time I played through this. <laughs> but that's the point, though, isn't it? When you're engaging with something that you've engaged with before, you know what to do and you know what to expect. So all you're looking for is optimizations and sort of enjoying it for the sake of enjoying it as opposed to going through it for the sake of discovering it for the first time. Because if, if you are one of the one of the few people that do watch my Destiny videos and my Blue in the Face playthrough, and you've never done, let's say, a blind raid run of of any of the newer raids as they come out, I, I would wholeheartedly recommend doing so, especially if you have friends to do it with, because the raiding in Destiny is a very joyous experience if you have friends. For for the first couple of run-throughs, because after, after you've done it enough times, it becomes very mechanical. I mean, just the other day, I was running the raid with, with the boys. Me and the boys were in Scourge of the Past, one of the raids in Destiny, and we were we were talking about Civilization VI and, and Total War and a bunch of other things while doing raid callouts. So we've gotten to the point where we know the raid encounters so well that we don't even have to pay much attention to it but that's still fun as well because when we mess up well we get to laugh at it because we were not paying attention okay and clearly i can't communicate well and do this part at the same time the entire bottom section of this area transports me to the top section so i have to use some very serious finesse in order to not get hit and it's very clear that i'm not good at that Damn, dude. <laughs> I knew the spider was there and I still died. That was probably the most mechanically demanding encounter we've been through so far in, in the game. And I did enjoy it. I, th I thought that was clever. So we have all four of our keystones. So now we can make our way to the door and open it to get the thing that we can bring to talk. Thank you. 
there we go. We have the curious tablet. Now we just have to make our way back to the exit and bring it to talk and to see what he says to us. Oh, this was completely unintentional. <laughs> I wasn't trying to go this way, and I found Lupo. Hello there, trusty traveler. Is it just me, or is this part of the world particularly tricky to navigate? These tunnels lead in the most perplexing directions. I wonder what could be the cause. Some curious root structure? The decay? Ah, well, a fun map-making challenge at the least. The new maps are 375 Spirit Light. I mean, I guess I'll buy it, but I feel like the map would have been more beneficial to me before I discovered the entire area. Unless he's going to illuminate something that I haven't seen yet. And no, he's not. I probably shouldn't have bought that from Talk. Oh, but I did. I think it is showing me that there is a, a Gorlic ore over there. Ah, you're back. And is that a tablet you have there? I see. It's a guide to reading the stones. Would have been nice to have this before, hmm? Wait, never mind. It's written backwards. Well, that's useless. Bah! Or is it? Once again, talk in his cryptic language is giving me advice, and I didn't even realize it the first time. So, remember we did the pattern of big, small, medium, medium, big, small, big? Well, this time, we're going to do it in reverse. And why are we going to do it in reverse? Because there's a secret that is going to be opened if we do so, and we'll get a new power. This was another spot where I thought I was going to have to brute force my way through with some some newfound ability, but that wasn't the case at all. So let's open it up. Ancestral Light. The light of the ancient spirits fills you with power. All attacks now deal 25% more damage. I am a freaking juggernaut. <laughs> I love this. Oh, I want to do a combat shrine now that I have the extra damage. But for now, I, I really want to try and get this Gorlic Ore. So I'm going to go back in and see if the enemies respawned. And I can use it to finesse my way up there. I'm just going to jump and fall straight down. And then I'll be safe. Alright, the guy's back. So, when he shoots his projectile at me, I'm going to use that to bash up here. Now, uh, oh no, I don't think I can reach even with bash, but maybe I can still use the projectile and the additional height that I've achieved for something. Because oh. what if I can go into, not this portal, but the one next to it. to get maximum height. Let's see if we make it. Hiya! Almost, almost. Okay, this is this is definitely what we have to do. Come here, slug boy. All right, maximum height. Let's get it. Hiya! Oh, this feels like the one. This feels like the one. Ah! Yes. Oh. <laughs> nearly nearly botched it. Now I'm going to look at the map just to make sure I go in the correct portal, and there we go. <laughs> Got it. Oh, this wasn't even Gorlic Ore. This was a, a spirit shard. You've gained a new spirit shard. Melee attacks deflect projectiles. That's, right. I, re I did get this before. Okay. I'm remembering all the things that I did and all the things that I didn't do. That's fine. But that, that sounds like a very cool ability. But for, I'm not going to equip it just yet because I'm, I'm Hammer Boy, and it's Hammer Time. But what we are going to do is head into the combat shrine that is... Which one should we go to? Maybe... 
there's one of them that I did. I'm pretty sure this is the one that I did last time. And I haven't showed you guys this combat shrine down here. So we're going to check that out and see how much damage our mallet does to the enemies. There's no numerical benchmark because I don't play this game with damage numbers turned on. But it'll still be a fun test of, of my capabilities and to, to, to see how much I've improved or not improved. Because let's be real, guys. I'm trash at this game. <laughs> Okay. Alright, this combat shrine has four stages in it. My body is more than ready. Bring it on, boys. Oh, well, okay, maybe I'm not as ready as I thought I was. Oh, okay, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Okay, let, let, let's get it together. <laughs> I did it, but that was really sloppy. I'm doing it again. I love these combat shrines so much. Okay, that was pretty spectacular. <laughs> I messed up a bit at the end because honestly my hands get a little sweaty whenever I, I play super intense combat with the controller, but that felt good, especially that part with the bugs where I was I was basically fighting in the air the whole time. Oh my goodness. I'm getting better at this game, y'all. I, I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. I'm getting good out here. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, what the hell are we doing and where the hell are we going? Um, the, well, we have to get here to the Silent Teeth, but I'm I'm 99.9% .9 certain that I have no way of getting into this gray bit. I'm pretty sure I need the ability to fly in order to get there, but I don't know how this game is going to enable me to fly. Maybe, maybe Ku is going to come back into play and he's going to fly me over there somehow, but uh, what I believe I can do is explore this way because I may be able to go this way with Bash. I'm pretty sure that's what I should do. So I'm going to go back to the to the save spot and warp all the way up here. And since I do have a buttload of money sitting around, maybe I can buy some new stuff from Twillin and and change my abilities around. Because while I am having great fun with, with our friend the Mallet, it could be interesting to change up our play style at once again. To see if there's anything anything better for me to use. So w when we get over to Twillin, I will do some thought about what abilities I could change around, what spirit shards I could put in to augment the way that I play. Because I've been going full offense lately with the, the critical hits and, and things of that nature. But instead, maybe I could try a more defensive approach. I 
Okay, let's see. Overcharge. Reduce energy cost by 50% and increase damage taken by 100%. That seems obnoxious, and I don't know that I have any use for that. Um, well, unfortunately, Twillin's not selling anything particularly exciting, but I can just buy extra health or extra energy. And I'm going to go for the extra energy, since that will allow me to stay on the offensive for longer. Oh, I, I, I can't just keep buying the, the upgrades. So I'll, I'll buy the extra health and the extra energy. And... I'm not going to... Wait, do I have to equip those? Or do they come as part of my default kit? Oh, no, I do have to equip those. Oh, that's interesting. I was under the assumption that these two would just be passive upgrades as opposed to things that I have to choose to equip. Because it doesn't seem like gaining one extra energy is incredibly valuable unless it's more than i'm thinking let's unequip something and, and see what that's like yeah it, re it really is just one extra pip of energy that that doesn't feel incredibly useful in its current state but i suppose once it's reached its maximum tier i'll be gaining much larger benefits from it oh you know what i think i understand why that in reduce cost thing is is an is an option i'm going to purchase it because why not let's let's change up our build into something really crazy i'm going to use splinter and quick shot and i'm going to take the extra energy with overcharge and a magnet for some quality of life so what we have now is the ability to spam our arrows probably Wow. I mean that that just goes forever. So we we've made a ranged Ori build. <laughs> I wonder I wonder what else I have. Do I have anything else ranged that I can throw on? I can throw on the sentry instead of the mallet. I think that was a sign that I should keep the mallet on. But with a sentry and the the spirit arc like this, that's a, that's a lot of DPS. It's expensive as hell to to spam all of that. But no, 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 no. I'm not trying to talk to you right now. But the sentry only costs what seems like half an energy, and the the spirit arc shots are are somewhat inexpensive. Wow, this is this is interesting. I've, I've made a new build. All right, I'm Archer Ori now. Now where where the hell was I going? Oh right, I was going to see what the hell is over here. All right. Let's go. I I have a feeling that I'm gonna struggle a bit with Archer Ori. Oh yeah, cause. Cause there's, there's there's some enemies. I was getting used to being able to stagger enemies with my with my melee strikes and now all I can do is ranged attacks I mean yeah the, I mean he's not gonna stop until he's done with his rotation Wow this has completely changed the way to play the game I'm gonna stick this out for a little while though just to just to, just to see and we've got a Moki here I'm not gonna give the Moki's voices because there's too many of them you're not a Moki, I can tell. Your ears are too floppy. I notice things, like this map I found. I would give it to Lupo the map maker, but he has enough maps. It should go to one who wanders. I hear he used to love maps. Maybe he would love this one. Could you give it to him? I saw him in the Wellspring Glades. Okay. Got another side quest. It's an old map. Hand to hand. Find a wanderer with an interest in maps. I think it's what it said. All right. Well, this is an area that I wasn't able to go to before because I didn't have Bash the last time I was here. And I get to use Bash to break down the gate. Hey, who tore down my wall? Okay. Boss fight? Not boss fight. Hey, it's talk. Talk is... How did Talk get here so fast? Come on over. Let's get a closer look at you. 
Oh, look at this. Everybody's hanging out in the Wellspring Glades now, apparently. What you doing up there, Oofer? Come down here. Let me buy some new weapons. Ah, greetings. I see you've made it to the Glade, Spirit. I don't suppose your journeys have taken you in the direction of the Wellspring yet. Rumors of an old library have roused my interest. Might do some exploring of my own. Perhaps I'll see you there? Perhaps, old friend, perhaps. Ah, new ability. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Fast travel. Well, I, okay. Well, this is unfortunate. I 100% have to buy fast travel. Select spirit wells on the map and warp to them from anywhere. I'm gonna buy it. But now that I've bought that, I don't have enough currency to upgrade any of my abilities or purchase any new ones. So that's unfortunate. But I'm gonna try out this archery build, though. I, I do like the way this feels. So let's let's explore. We, we've come across a new area and a new character. So let's see what the deal is. Well, first we'll talk to Talk. Say, what's that paper you got there, Squawk? These crisp dotted lines, that bold X, that's a treasure map. Here, I'll swap you my wanderer's pouch for it. Something tells me I'll be needing a bigger bag. Okay, I mean, I sort of didn't agree to this, but I'll take it. <laughs> All right, well, it was part of the hand-to-hand -hand quest anyway, so that's fine. I think Talk is my favorite character in the game. He, he's that ridiculous character that just ends up in weird places and you don't even really know how he got there. All right. Let's talk to big guy Grom. Grom. Yes, Grom. I didn't dare hope the rumors were true, but here you are. Niwen is home to a spirit once more. You made quick work of the wall there. Guess my building skills aren't what they used to be. Ha 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 ha. So funny. Still, I made a promise I would provide refuge from the decay here. These glades are counting on me, spirit. But without ore, I fear I will let them all down. The materials I need were abandoned when my kind fled to the mines. And without the proper supplies, well, my dream of a haven might end before it's even begun. That's sad. Care to help make these glades a better place? Sure. Repair the spirit well. Thorny situation. Those spiky vines all over the place are quite the nuisance, let me tell you. With some help, I could clear them out and make the glades much safer for everyone. Well, that seems uh, cute, but not ultimately necessary. I am going to repair the spirit well, because that's going to be a fast travel point. Ah, oh, Ori helped him build it. That's nice. Before our home was swallowed by sand, the spirits saw potential in Gort. Before our home was swallowed by sand, the spirits saw potential in Gorlic ore. They disappeared before they could try what we built them. But now, you're back, and that can change. Uh, care to help with another project? No, I don't have enough currency. Rebuilding the glades. So I have a side quest. I'm sure he just wants me to, to build everything that he has in his inventory. And that's his side quest. All right, I'll take it. It, it, it would certainly be nice to get rid of these vines because somebody going to trip and get hurt on that. So we'll do that as soon as possible. Hello, little Moki. I came far to find these glades. It's paradise here for Moki. Mookie? Moki. I don't know. My family will like it here, but we have no home. The Gorlick Groom. The Gorlick Grom. Is it Grom or Groom? Grom. The Gorlick Grom knows the building ways. Maybe he can help. Family reunion. Talk to Grum about building a home. All right, we got another quest. And Twillin has made his way up here as well. Yeah, ah, blah, 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 blah. Stop it. Spiritual. Ooh, he's got new stuff now. Look at this. Well, he has triple jump. That's fun. Swap maximum life and energy. Light harvest. Enemies drop two extra spirit light orbs. Hmm. That's how you get that money. 
But is it really time right now for me to go into farming mode? This is one of those optimization choices where if you don't buy it, then you regret it in the future. But if you do buy it, you're going to have to gimp whatever build you've come up with in order to make it work to have money in the future. I'm going to buy it. And I'm also going to equip it immediately. Oh, he wants me to... Okay, he found another rumor. Okay. Nice. So I am 100% going to equip the money thing instead of magnet. And we've got yet another Mookie. Oh, hello. I came here from the marsh because I heard the glades were beautiful. They are beautiful, but the light here is so bright, not like the gloomy marsh. That's why I'm hiding in the shade. If I had a hat like that funny one over there, but I do not. Does he want me to steal a hat from someone? This floor is breakable. Huh, a piece of gore liqueur, how convenient. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that I can swap my abilities on the fly whenever whenever I want to. So I can change things to suit the moment that I'm in, if need be. That's a bit of flexibility that I did not realize that the game had. Talk to Mote. Mute or M Mute is probably M-U. Mote is probably M-O. All right, hello, Mote. He is a lizard of science. I can hardly believe it. I'm talking to the real spirit in Niwen. You're smaller than I thought up close. B oh, but so bright. I myself prefer to blend in. It's not safe out there, you know. Lucky for you, I've been watching your every move. Just to make sure you're all right, of course. Okay, that was gross. I shouldn't have done that. Doesn't matter. Oh, this guy is keeping tabs on all of the stats that I've accrued over the course of the game. I have already bashed 321 times. I've dashed 1,151 times. Where's the death counter? Oh, I've died 135 times. <laughs> That's the only important stat, really. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's keep going. Oh, that guy's cool. <laughs> he pops out when you walk next to him. I want to go back to see if he does any funky animations, but that's fine. Well, I got an extra Gorlic Ore from going over there, so I can use it on Grom. Let's see what he's got. Yes, view projects. Dwelling repairs. It's a shame how these old Moki dwellings are in shambles. Maybe if we fix them up, the Moki could move back to the glades. All right, let's do it. Fantastic. I'll get right on that. Oh, look at this. We're building shelters out here. The Moki homes are complete, and they won't be needing repairs anytime soon now that they're Gorlick made. Okay, I can't afford anything else. Wait, so if I talk to the other guy that the home is for, is he gonna say something? Grom has built. Uh, wait, why am I giving him Grom's voice? Grom has built a good hut, and a good hut makes a good home. If you go east, you. If you go east, could you tell my family I have found a new home? They live in the silent woods in the first hut near the entrance. I will pay for the help, and here you might need this key. The woods are not safe, not anymore. All right, I got a hut key. Nice. Family reunion quest updated. <laughs> that was dope. Whoops. Oh my. Ooh, I take a lot of damage because of that that thing that's letting me spam my arrows more. All right. We're we're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I'm pretty sure I have talked to everybody in the immediate vicinity. I haven't gotten all of the different upgrades. Certainly not. And there's, there's a bunch of money hanging out around here. Let's try and grab some of that stuff. But I'm, I'm very happy that we've, we've made it to what feels like a questing hub and an interesting departure from what we've, what we've been in in terms of the environments. This feels like a place where people congregate and, and, and gather together as opposed to the sparse wilderness that we've been 
traversing normally. Th this is the same sensation that I get in MMOs and RPGs where you finally get to the, the main city area and you get to see all the other players hanging around finally after being alone and isolated for an extended period of time. Now, there, there is a lot of stuff over here, but I, I don't know that I can reach it. I, I, I want to jump up to the hut, but th there's no way for me to get up there. Yeah, th th there's a bunch of stuff over here that I just don't have the ability to reach. And there we go. That's going to do it for the play session for today. We are moving along at a pretty good pace. This episode was a little bit shorter because it was a re-recording and I knew a lot of the places I was going to already. So I didn't have to spend as much time understanding the puzzles, but it was still a good time. But when we move ahead, we're going to be on the struggle bus for a while, probably, because we're entering uncharted waters. With all of that said, we're going to wrap things up here, but don't worry, there's plenty more coming. So as always, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support the channel more than you already do, just by watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting, you can head over to patreon.com slash iblueairjgr to become a patron. As always, the name of the game is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. The name of the channel is iblueairjgr. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.